Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking the Flash episodes, The Death of Vibe, and Muse Flash. Um, all in all, these episodes I think were pretty solid stuff. Um, but let's just kind of get right into things. Uh, the Death of Vibe, I think, was actually probably the, mu the much better episode. I mean, here we see that Cicada is seriously, seriously no joke. And everybody is, I mean, they're basically kind of forced to pretend that Cicada succeeded in killing Cisco in order to kind of get him to back down. Or, you know, at least, you know, leave Cisco alone while he recovers from his injuries. Um, they even create this like sort of phony news article and all of that, which uh, I thought was kind of hilarious. And it's another nice moment for uh, Nora to shine. Um, and I, I do kind of like how this sort of builds on the whole situation of anything is possible now. I mean, Cicada was going to finish Barry off before uh, Nora saved him. So this really shows that uh, everything is up in the air. You know, there is no more, there's nothing that's written in stone in this situation. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, nothing really particular to say about the whole Killer Frost subplot. Um, but I, I do like that they're really doing a lot of stuff to kind of show that Ralph is an extremely competent person. I mean, despite his personal eccentricities and uh, the goofiness with the whole pear-shaped thing, yeah, you know, Elongated Man is basically, in a lot of ways, probably the number two detective in the DC universe. I mean, of course, Batman is number one, uh, and as was actually pointed out uh, amusingly in the Shadow Pact comics, Batman is only the greatest human detective, apparently the greatest non-human detective. Um, is Detective Chimp, and I'm not kidding, there's actually a character in the DC Universe called Detective Chimp, who is a chimp who is also a detective. Although, I suppose, if you want to take that as, like, not human, but also not an alien, uh, doubtlessly the greatest alien detective is, of course, Martian Manhunter. Uh -huh. But anyway, um... Getting on, getting right along with things, um, and also just because it's fresher in my mind, uh, the whole the the episode with uh, Newsflash I thought was definitely the weaker episode. Um, the villain of that episode, who I guess in the comics is called Spin or something like that, uh, I was not impressed by this at all. Um, especially the whole thing where she was posting news headlines bef like about like the bombing and stuff at the stadium before the police were even notified of that. I mean, come on. How did she expect to get away with that? Like people are seriously not going to notice. She was reporting news before the police even knew about it. I mean, yeah, she could always say, "Oh, well, I got an anonymous tip." Well, okay. So I'm sure somebody like that would get all kinds of crazy tips with no corroborating information, and then, what, just immediately, you, any any crazy nonsense somebody sends you, you immediately stick it up on your blog? Uh, I mean, the way the internet works these days, that certainly does seem to be how it is, but still, um, it's kind of hard to believe somebody who is an experienced journalist would buy, would fall, would fail in uh, doing something that obvious you know, the, the, the people would obviously notice, and especially the cops would notice. Um, and there's and then there's the whole thing with this whole meta tech thing, which I, I have to say I think is completely ridiculous. It reminds me of the first Michael Bay Transformers movie where, like, a soda machine gets turned into a Transformer, and it's just like, really? That's it? I mean... The idea was not bad, like, turn all this normal technology on Earth into Transformers. Okay, that would be really bad for those of us who are, you know, organic. But still, it basically, it turned into, like, oh, well, like, um, what was it, like, a remote control and a Coke machine got turned into Transformers? Well, okay, I'm not exactly quaking in my boots here. It's like, and exactly how does a knife count as tech? 
a knife is a piece of metal or stone, bone. I mean, calling saying like meta artifacts or something would make a little bit more sense in any case. But yeah, not uh, not feeling that. And why is this even necessary when we have all kinds of crazy technology that we know exists that gives people stuff that's more or less equivalent to superpowers? I mean, look at Pied Piper. Or Captain Cold. Or Heat Wave. I mean, granted, in the comics, those guys, like, uh, Captain Cold and stuff, did gain meta powers based on their technology and stuff, but that's a new thing. Yeah, this whole meta tech thing just seems really unnecessary. Ah, uh, but whatever, okay? But, um, moving along, uh, I really did like, in this episode, uh, with, um, Sherlock and Ralph working together again, and I, I, I do like kind of her establishing this interesting dynamic between, uh, Sherlock and everybody else. The whole thing with him, you know, uh, getting punched in the stomach by Caitlin kind of shows that they have an interesting relationship. Uh, his kind of rivalry with Ralph, and yet when Ralph steps in and proves him wrong, Sherlock doesn't try and steal credit for it, which is kind of what you were expecting him to do. He generously points out, it's like, yeah, this, this one's all Ralph. Which shows that, you know, while Sherlock does certainly have his flaws as a person, he's not all bad either. So... It's definitely kind of a silly thing for to kind of give to Tom Cavanaugh, but it's it's clear that he kind of has has fun with just this is really over the top stuff that he gets to do, playing all these multiple different versions of Harrison Wells. So sure, if if Tom Cavanaugh is having a good time, then you know let him go to town. We don't want him to leave the show because you know hopefully they'll give him the chance to be Reverse Flash again. Um, oh man, I, I so love it when he gets to be Eobard Thawne. You know, nothing, not not to take away from anything from uh, the other guy who plays Eobard Thawne, whose name I can't remember at the moment. But oh man, Harrison Wells, uh, Eobard Thawne is so 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 my absolute favorite. Um, so I especially thought this episode was good when it kind of dealt with the whole thing with uh, Nora and Iris. I mean, it's really explicitly pointed out here why Nora doesn't get along with her mom. That this whole idea that, oh, I have superpowers is a really new thing for her. Now, you have to wonder, well, she knew her father was the Flash. Um, did she just not wonder, like, okay, did I just not inherit his metagenes? Which is especially weird, because she probably would have known that Iris, at least temporarily, had super speed. I mean, did she think she was basically like a squib or something? I mean, that's the only thing that really makes sense. Um, and so she had this, Nor future Iris had this tech implanted in Nora that suppressed her powers. So that would also mean that future Cisco, future Caitlin, future Joe and Cecile and all these other people, I mean, there's no way they didn't know about this. No freaking way. That means they would have also have gone on along with this deception of Nora. Again, Nora doesn't say that they knew about it, but come on, does it really make sense that they wouldn't have? And really, who do you think would have they would have gotten to design something like that and install that in Nora? Well, you think this is installing designing something like that is going to be a problem for Cisco or one of the legends? And who's the doctor that they trust most, more than anybody? Well, of course, Caitlin. So, again, it's not established, but it, it just basic logic tells you that there's no way they wouldn't have known about this. So, that means that not just Iris, but all these other people that Nora cares about were in on this deception that went on for her entire life. Why is she only mad at Iris? And I do like that Barry points out to Iris when she's really kind of kicking her herself for what the actions of her future self. He says, look, we don't know fully why your future you did all of this, but you doubtlessly did it to protect Nora because you thought that was the what the thing right thing to do was. In other words, 
you were doing this in very basically flat out sentences. You were doing this out of love. And he's right. That's what Iris, for whatever reason she did, she would have done that out of love in order to keep Laura safe. Unfortunately, Barry handles laying that out to Nora extremely badly, which makes her feel like both her mother and father have betrayed her. Now, to be completely fair, Nora's pissed off at Iris for something that she hasn't done yet. I mean, Nora hasn't even been born in this world. So being mad at her mom for something that she hasn't done, and now thanks to the timeline being altered, me even not do, doesn't really make sense. But... It's not also it's also not fair to just expect Nora to completely abandon some serious emotional baggage like that just like that people people just don't operate that way but again we saw that Iris clearly cares deeply for Nora and wants her to be a good speedster I mean Iris walks her through putting out that fire and is successful in it. So it does show that if she wants to, Iris can be a tremendous asset to Nora, a tremendous boost to her daughter as a speedster. The same way that she's a tremendous asset to Barry, even beyond just being that lightning rod, the thing that he comes home to, that, well, that person, I should say. So I think them kind of building a more solid relationship is going to be a fun and interesting thing to see over the course of uh, this season. Um, people have pointed out uh, that when we see, every time we see Jesse L. Martin in uh, this series so far, he's actually been sitting down. And I heard recently that he's actually had to take medical leave from the show for a while. So we'll be seeing a lot less of Joe. And again, if he's having some kind of a medical problem, that would explain why we've always seen him sitting in all of his scenes so far this season. Um, it's certainly disappointing, but, you know, people are just flesh and blood at the end of the day. So um, hopefully whatever's wrong with him, Jesse L. Martin will uh, get back on his feet soon. Uh, he really has just brought so, so much heart and beautiful moments to the show. Um, I would... I would really be upset if for some reason he wasn't a, able to continue to be on the show, but let's let's be positive here. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap that up here. I do want to say one thing. Uh, I actually was looking through my archives today, and I noticed that uh, more than a few episodes of this uh, playlist of The Flash, which goes back to the very first episode, uh, got deleted by YouTube. Um, don't know what's going on there. I think it was just one of those situations where... YouTube gets radically overzealous with just deleting stuff, even though, you know, how in the world they could delete these these reviews where all I do is sit and talk about a TV show, I don't know, but I think it's just sort of like they're looking for things that look like people are putting like full episodes of stuff on YouTube and anything that looks like that got deleted. I mean, I did see some stuff here that said like possible violations, but I'm like, well, okay, but there's nothing I did here that's violating anything, so I don't need to worry. Well, apparently that isn't the case. Uh, of course, the actual original files for, for this episode's recordings have all been deleted, because you know, why would I hold on to them? So uh, I'm actually pretty pissed right now, but uh, I don't really think there's anything I can do to get those reviews back. So, uh, but then again, you're probably not going to go back and watch old episode reviews from years ago. On the other hand, I still do get review comments and stuff on reviews for various things that I made years and years ago. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that one. Uh, I'm going to do a little checking to see if there's anything I can do about it at this point. I guess I should have taken that stuff more seriously at the time, but the past is the past. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for... Uh, sticking with me. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, subscribe. Of course, you can also follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi and join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Till next time, take care and have a good one.